Welcome to another episode of Apartment Model Railroader. My name is Joseph. Union Pacific engineers have announced a new prototype train called the Folding Train. Management claims the space-saving design should be perfected by 2075. In other news, the Metro Transportation Agency has lowered fares, resulting in a tenfold increase in ridership. Ironically, I took that same train to work today. Nothing brings a sense of realism to a layout better than prototype weathering. From acid spills and corrosion, to grime and graffiti, weathering can enhance the lowest cost model into an effective representation of the prototype. One of the biggest challenges in weathering is time, or the amount of time spent on each model. Some of these models have literally dozens of hours of time spent weathering them. And while the end result is no doubt spectacular, the time commitment is huge. So how could somebody with limited time and money create an effective looking model? Please enjoy the show with your narrator, Harry English. Welcome YouTubers. Scratch building. Weathering, construction and operations. I'm your host, Harry English. Like, subscribe, and comment now. After finishing up the kit assembly, the next task is to give this car some quick prototype weathering. Gathering the needed supplies and clearing a workspace. The first step was to find a picture of the actual prototype rail car as a reference. That image was found at rrpicturesarchive.net, a great source of information. I set aside the colors needed, a couple grays, umber and sienna, brown and white, and began by washing the trucks with alcohol and left them to thoroughly dry. A micro brush applicator was used to paint the wheel sets with burnt sienna, giving them an orange coat of rust as per the prototype image. While the wheel sets dried, the trucks were now painted with raw umber, and the bearing caps with a touch of sienna. Then, the backs of each wheel set was coated. This is a wash of 2 fluid ounces or 60 milliliters of water, and a dime sized drop of acrylic white paint. A couple drops of alcohol help the mix flow. Applied in multiple coats, after drying, this wash dulls the rail car's factory finish. With the rail car faded, acrylic paints are used to duplicate the patched paint of the prototype. While not exact, the end result is quite similar. Attention is now brought to the underside of the rail car. This is where many years of grime and rust accumulate. A heavy coat of raw umber was used throughout the underside to effectively represent older corrosion and grime. A grey and brown mix could also be used. The coppolas and draft boxes, brake rigging, and car ends received heavy coats of paint. These areas are notorious for grime buildup and corrosion. After the paint had dried, each truck and wheel set was installed. The wheel axles were each painted to match the grimy underbody of the freight car. Similar to the first wash that was used, a second wash, with raw umber, as a grime layer, was applied. The roof and walkway, and the car body, were coated. After each coat, the paint that had pooled around the bottom sill of the body was removed by capillary action. Each successive coat was allowed to dry thoroughly, until the desired amount of grime was reached. 
The roof hatches and walkway were then dry brushed with white acrylic paint. Simply dab a brush in the paint, then wipe most of it off before brushing the rail car. Continue to brush until a thin layer is achieved. This gives the area a nice, used and faded look. After dry brushing, the rail car was finished with a grime wash applied to the roof. Here is the end result, weathering based on a similar prototype, completed in less than an hour. The use of a hair dryer greatly speeds the drying between each paint layer, and the inexpensive and easy to find acrylic paints keep the job simple. Thanks always for watching, and please remember to like, share, and subscribe.